babies revere Corey as they can. They do. That one in Portland was staring at me for an hour we were just at that Vietnamese Port- restaurant. We were just in Portland a couple weeks ago. This baby could not take his eyes off Corey. They can't ever take their... They're enthralled by him. They get. They see him and they get just like... Sucked in. Hypnotized. And I think it's because they look at him and they're like, like I said, this is our king or our God or yeah. something. <laughs> they're like, this is... Yeah. Clearly, I'm, I'm supposed to kneel before <laughs> this man. Yeah, right. Because but yes, you're right. I he would... is the greatest version of me yeah. as a baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Holy shit, what's up, Airheads? Welcome back. Here we are in Airstream Studios for another riveting edition of Putting On Air. It's just going to make a little note of the fact that this is actually the first episode we've recorded since the show launched in real time sure is and uh, yeah hey yeah, huh how about right. everybody cheers. huh cheers thank you all for being cheers. here cheers cheers, cheers. cheers to you. i know uh-huh. that as you all see this it's been weeks since we launched <laughs> but you know we're playing fast and loose with the timeline over here yeah man we appreciate all the feedback man it's been uh it's been really nice we've get, been getting a lot of uh sweet reviews and comments and uh People emailing us at puttingonairs at gmail.com. Keep all that Keep them up. coming. Keep all yeah, that Keep subscribing. Really keep, leading, keep leaving the reviews. Keep all that good stuff. It helps a lot. Like, yeah. subscribe, tell your mama and them. Yeah, and tell your mama and them to tell other people, too. To tell like their mama pyramid and them. scheme style. Yeah. Get all the, the mama and thems. Mama and thems. Yeah. Yeah. Act, yeah. Activate them all. Uh, yeah, that's how we su- grow. In support of putting on airs. So... Uh, tonight I'm gonna be doing, you know, once again, here we go, Venn diagram. But also, just I just want to give a little disclaimer here. Before long, y'all, I will run out of these. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already starting to really have to rack my brain for yeah. some of these. And I know I'll keep coming I up think, with them. I think there's gonna be more than there you will think. Be. Still. I agree. I agree. But like, but it does have an expiration date. There's an expiration date on topics where fancy people and rednecks overlap. But I'm gonna do as many of them as I can think of. And my plan is after that, I'll go back to you know really early on, like with mummies and shit. Mm-hmm. It was just fancy people, just a little, just a yeah. glimpse into fancy people culture. So that's my plan for now. But as long as I can, I'm gonna keep talking about areas in which. Rednecks and fancy people overlap. The Venn diagram. Illuminati. The pussy I'm sign. In, I'm diamonds, not at risk. Jay Z. Yeah, yeah. History, <laughs> of Professor Cho. You'll literally never run never. out. Yeah. History be that way. Yeah, it do. So my subject tonight, where the two overlap, is motorsports, mm. auto racing, and I think if you you know you're thinking you can already figure out in your head what's the fancy people part, what's the redneck part, but we'll wait a little bit and get into it. We're also this gonna, episode's going to go long, everybody. Just letting you know. Well, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. I can talk about Dale Earnhardt for a while. Sure. I'm just, yeah. just <laughs> letting you know. Up, right. Fast forward 45 minutes, we're crying. <laughs> I'm telling you, I giving remember where eulogies I was. and shit. I was at the Mexican about, yeah. restaurant. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. I was at my buddy Rooney's house. I, well, yeah, we was looking at porn, I think. But then <laughs> trying to look at porn. Yeah. It was the early days of you the internet. You couldn't get a boner after that for at least no, a week. No, hell no, dude. No. Dick dude. was at half mass. Yeah, it was. <laughs> 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 Raise hell and praise Dale. So, mm. uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be talking about. And then Professor Cho is going to enlighten us all on the subject of Nero. Nero, the, crazy motherfucker, crazy, as I understand it. Crazy motherfucker. Like to fiddle. The t- he did like to fiddle. So we'll wait, because, you know, I yeah. always tell you the things I know about the subject before yeah. you start. So we'll wait for the segment get into that. I don't know much except for that one thing. But anyway. And, I, I, and I, I'm so excited to tell you about what I know about his fiddling. I'm excited to hear it too. Mm-hmm. So, a real piece of shit. Spoiler alert. Yeah, Nero. <laughs> no, <laughs> I thought he hit for everybody. Well, he's Nero. a man in history. Yeah. So, all right. So, but before we get into all that, just a little bit of you know, fun fact bullshit up top. I saw something the other day that I really appreciated. Uh, so, there's a member of Parliament. Turns out, a real life member of British Parliament whose name is the Right Honorable Lord Pickles. And think about... I didn't know he was a member of Parliament. Yes. And think about (laughs) what you would imagine a man that Lord Pickles would look like. Yeah. I bet you nailed it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure Russ has got him on your screen there. Look at him. That is Lord Pickles. Guess what, Cho? I I looked this up. Turns out he, a direct descendant of the Earl of Sandwich. 
Really? No. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> that would That'd be, be possible, too. wouldn't it? It would be possible. I mean, you know, it might be, Dude. which would be incredible. But no, nah, I was just hitting because, you know, pickles go on sandwiches. I was just doing a thing. But yeah. I thought it was, I mean, I thought it, I, you, you, you sold it really well. Has there ever been a member of British Parliament that more looked like a member <laughs> right. of ten, Tennessee's state <sighs> legislation? Like yeah, that now guy, he guy's a Venn diagram right he there. Is, you're right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. He is a Venn diagram because he does look like an old Southern Baptist, like conservative, yeah, Falwell type. For, Falwell type. Put him but, in some overalls. But <laughs> but I also <laughs> put to you that he looks exactly the way he should. Yes, look I agree. I agree. As the right honorable Lord, Lord Pickles, Pickles right? which is and, a character but, in a fucking like Matt Groening something yes, like a Simpsons member of parliament yeah, character right. yes but uh he probably would have a lot in common with the tennessee state house representative uh because he is the british equivalent of that is Lord he really Pickles. he's like ultra conservative he's uh the conservative party or whatever he's uh they put him in charge of the it's something like the office of post holocaust relations Ugh. which like having the, the minister yeah. in charge of the office of oh. post Holocaust relations be named Lord Pickles yeah. and look like that comes shambling in fucking bumbling and fucking you know the Nazis were reprehensible. I've always been with the Jews. Yeah. What are yeah Jews? What about them? <laughs> Kinda, but what? <laughs> no, like. Okay, <laughs> what the fuck is that job? Like, what is someone who's in charge of post-Holocaust relations I think so, doing? okay, not... Because that not, sounds intense. Without not delving into politics, also this is their politics, so I don't really know what I'm talking about, but do you know how over here in America, like, conservatives really love israel even yeah. though they like also often hate jews, jews. Yeah. they love israel but hate you you know that whole thing Because that's the jews stay over there well so over there it's like it's an israel thing i think oh, okay that office is like a israel situation so okay. he's a conservative politician they're pro-israel as well and so it has something to do with that you know i that, think that whole israel thing but his is name complicated Lord, it sure is Corey. <laughs> you know? and this is not the show for that <laughs> no it's not matter of fact i don't i don't host a show that's the show for that no. i would much rather avoid that whole thing what's a, like the literal minefield that it is what did lord pickle start out doing like he he's always been he's a, a lifelong politician or, pickle stuff yeah <laughs> was i mean does like because your name like you know like oh if your last name's shepherd it was possible that you were a sheep herder or something like that was his family into they pickles, invented pickles. They he comes from them. old pickle money uh, yeah well that's good first people ever invent have. pickles actually they maybe the first people invented pickles were jews. jews yeah and they do them half like they do the half the sour plot ones thickens it sure does <laughs> it actually does kind of check out that huh. the, that the the post holocaust relations guy is lord pickles we're gonna have to pick look pickles and jews, jews. man they yeah. go together pickles like this and jews. <laughs> pickles and jews pickles and jews i thank god almighty for pickles and jews <laughs> <laughs> guys uh sour he used anyway. to work with uh former labor cabinet minister ed balls <laughs> <laughs> so what did his family right. invent <laughs> so this is not at all related to any of this but producer russ just reminded me of it and i'm gonna share it sophomoric humor all that stuff so when i lived in Oak not Ridge, on this show god damn it when i've told i've told you this story before but i've definitely never told it on here when i lived in oak ridge tennessee working my old day job getting started as a comedian i drove by this uh, real estate sign one day it was uh, uh this property was for sale <laughs> and the real estate agent had his name on there and clearly some enterprising young teenagers in the area had vandalized slash modified the sign <laughs> the man's name <laughs> so the guy's name 
was Richard, but he went by Dick. <laughs> yeah. His name was Richard. Bold move, by the Richard way. Richard Bales. Okay. B-A-L-E-S. Richard Bales. But he went by Dick. Yeah. So it said, for all inquiries, contra- contact Dick Bales. <laughs> but these teenagers <laughs> had taken some white out or some white paint yeah. and erased the two top lines of the E in Bales. <laughs> so from a distance, it looked like all inquiries contact Dick Balls. And dude, I laughed until I cried about that. Like I saw it all the rest of the way home. I was fucking la- I couldn't stop. Like I got home told Katie about it. I was like, it's said dick balls his name is dick balls I, so it was the first time i looked it up and it's dick bales but dude what a layup great is bro I, when you go by richard when you or rich or rick or like just fucking, change your name <laughs> when you first started when you said i've told you this story but i haven't told it here i remembered in my head i was like i know this has to do with some vandalism yeah but i couldn't remember what and that payoff was just as good, man. I had totally fucking forgot because this is like this is like eight years ago. Oh yeah, easy. So like or more, this eight is or way nine years ago. And like yeah. you probably you definitely texted the thread. Yeah. Fucking content. I took Dick, a picture. Yeah. I took Dick a picture balls. of it and I posted it on Facebook. This was pre me hitting. Also, it's almost kind of like stealing a joke because I'm not the genius who did it. Yeah, you know, right. Some but, 15 but, year old was, but they wanted people Banksy. to appreciate it. Yeah, but I. I took a picture of it, posted it on Facebook, and I said, if anybody is uh, looking to buy a house, I hear this guy's the total package. <laughs> nice. That's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty good. Dick you need balls. to go dig that up and retweet it now that you're, you hit. You're right. I should. Because you could really I do some numbers. I 100% definitely posted that. I was thinking so it about still that the other day somewhere. with my old- uh, The crab? Yeah, the crab. Yeah, yeah. Did, uh, Tell them about the crab. So, Russ, <laughs> so, Russ <laughs> when I first started living in New York- uh, <laughs> When I first started living in New York, this is like seven, eight years ago- I uh, I walked past this restaurant and it was called City Crab, right? And it says City Crab on the sign. So I take a picture of the sign that says City Crab and I post that picture. And then my caption was in quotations, queer, and I attributed it to country, country crab. crab. <laughs> <laughs> And I laugh. It's great. It's so funny. It's great. That holds up. That's it solid. That will hit today. I know. I need to find it. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to explain that, but. Did that survive your great social media purge of post-hitting? I definitely wouldn't have taken that down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but even if I hard. did, I could recreate that yeah. one again. You know, your old man's got a. Yeah. Got to take uh, inventory of past hits. He does, but I'm pretty sure that I saw that when I go, yeah, that that one's okay. I stand by it. I stand by it. Country Crab would call City Crab a queer. He would. Over and over again. Oh, my God. Fucking dick balls. Dick balls, man. So, anyway, salute to the right honorable Lord Pickles. What do you got to do to be right honorable? So like, I know like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I didn't look into it. Like, you know, it, they've got I, knights. They've got right. the OBE, which is a uh, um, order of the British order of the Empire. British Empire. Yeah. So like, which one of those could we get? Like, the, I don't think we can get none of those. No, if they we lived there for have, like five years. We get it. We get it. I'm sure they have something that we could get. But I, I could get Charles when Charles is king. I can get him to knight me. He looks okay. like he fucks. You know what I mean? He looks and like that's he parties. what you need of somebody that fucks. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you. I think when he's in charge, first off, he's going to be the last one. He's 100% going to be the last one because, like, she's taking it real, real serious. And, like, she has really maintained the order of the royals. That son of a bitch is about to get real silly. How do you think he taught the right honorable Lord Pickles? <laughs> Imperialization. Six million. Yeah. Yeah. That's that voice. Like that. We've done that voice before on here, but I feel like he would have that voice. He'd either have that or the complete uh, opposite, which yeah, is. It, what, what, what would that be? Oh, you've got some. You got... Oh, okay. Play it. Oh, God. Oh, ads. Make... That don't hit. That's all right. I'm going to take it care of. <laughs> A patient former government secretary said he had little time for the Grenfell inquiry, 
as he had plans for lunch. Could I respect <laughs> that? <man? laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to hear him talk. <laughs> away this morning and I have changed my schedule <laughs> to, to fit the same. Wait, he had to have lunch? Yeah. Busy day. He, does he I like pickles? Happy, yeah. But this is more important than anything. But I would urge you to use your time wisely. Eric Pickles was Secretary of State responsible for fire safety <laughs> before Grenfell. But today, his lordship seemed to have more pressing engagements than explaining <laughs> to the inquiry. <laughs> 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 so, so, of course, I was crumpets you. waiting on me. I was told yeah. there would be I was, a sandwich. I was told repeatedly we would be <laughs> out of here. <laughs> I would like it's it's time for me to make it <laughs> to my sandwich buffet. <laughs> that was fucking perfect. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, he didn't sound like I thought he was going to. Mm -mm. Sounded fancy as hell. No, but the <laughs> things he was talking about. I love your recommended video up there. Am I gay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the putting on airs. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that checks out. Yeah. That really checks out. Oh, Lord Pickles. Oh, bless his heart. Mm -hmm. his swollen heart. Uh, okay. Hey, I don't think you saw it. Just uh, get take a guess. What do you think his first name is? I bet okay. you're. I bet you're not going to guess it. Uh, I would. I would say to you that his first name is, in my opinion, not particularly okay. Raven. Okay. So the opposite of what I'd think. Yeah. Because I would think like a Reginald. Right. Right. Or like a Ian Ambrose. Yeah. Or yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Gary. That's not a bad guess. It's Eric. Oh, that don't hit. No, I know. It Gary did. Pickles is a funny name. Eric Pickles, I mean, Eric Pickles is still a funny name. Anything the Pickles, Pickles is doing the, yeah. Pickles is doing all the heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. On that, yeah. Yeah, because like, when we were kids, like Tommy Pickles. Yeah, Stu Pickles. And yeah. it, that was such a ridiculous name. It's like nobody would be named Pickles, and then this motherfucker's Pickles. He's the only Pickles I've ever heard of. Tommy Pickles here for you? Bro. Yeah. Yes, he did. Because he's a bald. Yes, yes, yes. Also, we got out of that old segment without me saying, you know, uh, if you let yourself go. And you did it. And it, <laughs> well, you made you brought it back by you circled back to it by bringing up babies. Yeah, right. Because you know, babies, uh, babies revere Corey as they can. They do. Just that one in Portland was staring at me for an hour we were just at that in Vietnamese we were restaurant. Just in Portland a couple weeks ago, his baby could not take his eyes off Corey. They can't ever take. Their, they're enthralled by him. They get. They see him and they get just. Like sucked in, hypnotized, and I think it's because they look at him and they're like, like I said, this is our king or our god or yeah. something. <laughs> they're like, this is yeah, clearly I'm, I'm supposed to kneel before <laughs> this yeah, man right. because. But yes, you're right. I he would, is the greatest version of me. Yeah, as a baby, mm -hmm. I would look yeah, well, like Eric I, Pickles. He looked like a baby too. Mm -hmm. I've lost like 50 pounds since we started this show. But I said yeah, if you I, let right, yourself right. you, go you, you did, which by the way, you can't, you can't. To an extreme level. wait till I do that. You I can't. mean, it'll hit, yeah. Oh, and you know it's going to happen too. I feel like Corey has body dysmorphia. Like he thinks he still looks like this I do. Guy. No, I've yeah. got body dysmorphia for him. When I see is. that, I go... Yeah, that's why as soon as you pulled that up, I was like, I know what Trey's going to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're that traumatized. Looking in the mirror. Look traumatized. Anyway, all right. Oh, Christ. All right, I'm excited about this next sponsor. It's a new sponsor here putting on airs. You know, we like to talk about wieners. Well, now let's talk about wieners and balls. That's right. Support for putting on airs is, <laughs> support for putting on airs is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. So join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code POA at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 8 million balls. You know, listen, you're, we got to we got to stay trimmed Your up math down there. is always Your math is always correct. It's 8 million yes, balls. 8 million balls worldwide. Can't beat it. A lot of ball stuff. Uh, but yeah, you know, you got to stay trimmed up down there. Too many guys neglect it, neglect that. I think you don't want to be just a bird's nest. You know what I mean? Like no. it's not good. It gets, you know, nobody likes that. So you got even, you know, I've been married for over 10 years, but still it's important. And Manscaped with their performance package 4.0, it's a complete game changer. What do you think about it, Joe? Oh, I love it. And here's the thing, man. We don't think about this a lot, but like you you sh you wouldn't if you really think about it, you don't want to use the same thing to trim your face that do you do your balls. But mm -hmm. like I have for years, mm -hmm. uh and that is until the lawnmower 4.0 came into my life. This is the trimmer of the future and uh uh I, dare I say, the greatest ball trimmer ever. It is fantastic. I also threw me in a little uh, weed whacker, 
which I yeah. enjoy, which is my nose. It does my nose and it does my ears because uh, I found that even though I can't grow hair on the top of my head, the ones in my, it's coming straight out my nose. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't hit. No, don't hit. But I love it. It's a great trim. I immediately threw my other trimmer out. Uh, they've got crop preserver ball deodorant, by the way, which is wonderful because here's the deal. Everybody knows this. When you take a shower and you get out of the shower, within about 15 minutes, your balls go back to smelling like balls. I do. You know what I mean? Like immediately, no matter how clean you are, your balls go back to smelling like balls. You're going to get the ball, uh, ball deodorant. You got the travel bag and all that good stuff. It's a great deal, and you can make it an even better deal. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code POA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code POA. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Trim your balls. Make that Do wiener it. look bigger, baby. That's right. Who don't want a wiener, bigger wiener? Everybody Nobody. does. Thank you, Manscaped. Yeah. Psst. Who's going to take care of your family if something happens to you? What would they do without your income? If you don't have a plan, you need to go to GoliathLife.com. Get a quick quote for more than 20 carriers. You don't even have to leave the house. If you need a medical exam, they'll send somebody to your house or office. You're in total control. You pick the rates, you pick the payments, you pick the terms, you're in total control, but it gives you and your family peace of mind. What if something happens to your income? Hurry to goliathlife.com. So let's talk about car racing for a little bit here, I reckon. So uh, car racing is very much motorsports, we'll call it. It's wild because it's like very much the province of fancy ass motherfuckers right it has to be yeah because you have to afford you have to be able to afford it and the thing is that's always been true like you think like back in the day when it first got started and everything like you know we're both downton abbey fans mm-hmm. remember in downton abbey they had some old timey car races yeah. and stuff and fucking that's how uh matthew died not in a car race but in an automobile he first got his first car and he was just like oh my god first try here and then mary's later bow who played margaret's a- bow in the crown correct uh, was a uh he was a racer yeah he was a, a, a racist old, old-timey car ra- yeah <laughs> old-timey car racist yeah yeah uh but that was because like back then when cars first became a thing you know it was literally impossible yeah for anyone but rich people like nowadays you can buy an old beat up piece of shit one and fix it up yourself but back then when cars first became a thing there was no such thing as an old beat up when like cars were new you know what I mean? Like there, right. there was only the new ones. So, and I don't want to jump around too much, but so I, that thing you were saying about buying the old ones and fixing them up and everything, that is sort of how the rednecks even get into it at all. But we'll save that for a little bit later. But like, you, it was like an elitist thing. You know, it was the hot new shit. And it's like when we talked about with horses, you know, there's like a dick measuring contest yeah. amongst people that can afford to do it. I also think, and this isn't like explicitly stated anywhere, but it's like, there's an element to it that's like, do hitting at something that that uh, regular people can't, literally can't, can't hit at golf used to be that way is they shit yeah you know what i mean For like sure. they love anything like that and when you couple that with this like brave new world paradigm shift brand new technology of you know the fucking gas powered engine yeah or whatever it's, it's like, got 30 horses in there yeah, my right. lord so they were bound to do it. You know, yeah. that plus men, men and measuring they dicks, like it was only a matter of time before they took this new fucking mechanical horse yeah, that right, they just right. come out <laughs> with. And somebody was like, I bet my mechanical horse could beat your mechanical horse. Oh, is, is that, that right? right? Is that right? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, right. Why and did they, they used to fight it? like that back so then? What's Fucking spoilers for a couple episodes from now. We're going to talk about that again in a really? future Fisticuffs? episode. Yes, pugilist? we are. Yes, pugilist. Yes, but that's a few episodes from now. But anyway, uh, fucking, yeah. So, you know, the fucking man with a brand new thing that poor people couldn't have, uh, you know, a of dick course. dick you put gas in, a baby. dick you put gas in. How fast can it go? But my dick's faster than your dick. Mm-hmm. There you go. It's going to be fucking racing before long. Some of the first races were won the car that won them how fast do you think they went like literally like oh. the first recorded automobile races how fast do you think the car that won them was going 
37 miles an hour. No, like 12. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Man, I was, yeah. I was. But you know what's funny thinking about that is like back then. Woo! Yeah, right. Woo! Yes. Woo! Yeah. They got goggles on People and shit. People are sprinting by yeah. taking pictures and shit. <laughs> yeah. like, ah. Taking those like explodey pictures. There's a little the boy hitting the stick fucking, with, yeah. a, 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 uh, with a circle thing yeah. just yeah. running past yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What, uh, uh, the whole crap women are falling out yeah, and stuff yeah. from the danger yeah. of fucking like the riveting like white knuckle experience of this 12 mile There's an a hour whooping its ass mechanical yeah. horse race yeah, yeah. <laughs> pass with goofy dog <laughs> so goofy so like, goofy i try it's to- like at that speed too like what was them goggles doing? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I had the fucking goggles yeah. on. I'm like, thank God I remember my goggles. Yeah. Because I didn't have windshields and shit. But that is funny thinking about them wearing that. And just mm-hmm. a, a fly sitting on their goggles. Like, where were we going? Just buzzing around their head yeah, and there's stuff. There's just no there's problem. There's yeah. The car. But that was fucking, that was daredevil shit back then. I try to, like, look at, like... It's so easy to look at it with 2020 lenses and be like, that's so fucking goofy with what we have now, but it's all they knew. But like, there's still some things about back then that I'm still like, I, how did you not know that was fucking stupid? Right. You know? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and I don't know if they had to, uh, I don't see a crank on the front of it, but it's also funny thinking about like a race car, like they got to get out in the front of oh, it yeah, and yeah. fucking <laughs> crank it up real quick, run around the side, jump in, <laughs> yeah. put their goggles on and fucking go, go 12, 12 miles, miles an, hour. an hour. Just looking at the other dude, like you can have a whole conversation with him, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> vagabond, <laughs> derelict. Fucking, yeah. Oh, God. So that's how it all started. Uh, and obviously, it's evolved quite a bit since then. But was the first? Was the we? I always think that the, the first car was a Model T, but it probably wasn't though. That was the first one we got. Uh, it definitely wasn't the Model T. I feel like Mercedes was one of the first ones. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't like, get into they, like they the had them before we did, right? Yeah, yeah, they did. But Henry Ford made it. What he did was made them like For accessible. The yeah, right. right. Uh, yeah, hated Jews, Henry Ford. But uh, boy, he did didn't bringing he? it back to the first segment. They didn't. Yeah, Carl Carl Benz, Benz, I believe yeah, also right. hated Jews. Yeah, most. Yeah. Uh, most they of made them, their yeah. uniforms, didn't they? Or was that Hugo Boss? That was Hugo Boss. Yeah, look at how Volkswagen made some of that shit. Look how pimp the, these are, though. No, yeah. those are sweet. But dude, if you you know if you look at anybody who was like successful throughout history, that wasn't jewish hated them they probably hated the jews yeah that's just how it's just how history's it, been it, for the I, jews and now i know bless their hearts you yeah, know for sure but uh anyway so and then obviously it kept evolving and everything but it remained the you know a thing for rich people to do and it's remained that way to this day pretty much like now so now uh you know from that you draw a direct line to fucking f1 which like i didn't I didn't get down in the weeds on everything that's going on with F1 right now. But it's so like, hot right now. I know, but I, and I was going to say, like, do you know why that is? Because that show. Because that show. F1 is like a huge deal right that show. now specifically. What show? On Netflix? F1 Drive to uh, Alive to Drive or something like that. So, yeah, there's this, like, basically... What had happened was, I guess F1 wasn't doing that well or something. Yeah, it always and seemed, so, at least in this country, especially very, like niche or whatever but I'm, i know it's huge lately well they hired a crew and this crew and I, now i haven't watched this fucking show but i've heard uh dan levitard's podcast talk about this show enough to where i kind of at least know a little bit about what's going on they hire a crew There's a trailer yeah yeah <laughs> check this shit out what if i told you that this motherfucker would go faster than shit so basically, they've yeah, hired a document. They've they've hired a documentary crew to follow these F one races around, and they're really highlighting these people's personality. Like it's become more about the dudes than it is the race. Okay. So so women are really into it because these dudes are hot and shit. But because of that, it's like the number one show on Netflix. They're also, by the way, about to do this with the PGA Tour because the PGA Tour was like, "Hey, we're boring and no one gives a fuck about us. We Another, should we should bunch of hot guys there too." 
Yeah. Right. Well, there are a couple. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple for sure. So it's the hot new thing because of this show. So it's all about the dudes, right? You said, yeah. oh, they're all hot and everything. They are also almost all rich, rich as, as fuck. fuck. Yeah. And always have been. Yeah. They're like, like I found multiple articles where it's like people asking, is F1 just for the son of billionaires now? Yeah. And there's people saying it's like, you now. know, for a long time it was the son, it was a sport for the son of millionaires. <laughs> but now will it be the son of billionaires? Oh, poor millionaires. Poor millionaire <laughs> sons, yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, do all Formula One drivers come from rich families? And they don't literally all come from rich families, but the vast majority of them do. And it makes sense when you think about it, because like the bar- the only way to even start to hit at this sport is to, first of all, it starts with karting, right? Kart racing, yeah, which yeah. is just like souped up go-karts. Right. And that's what kids start out racing, like fucking eight-year-olds or whatever. And, but uh, theirs hit way harder than ours did. Yeah, dude, our go-karts were not even really the same thing right. as like kart racing. And those are like, I think one's like five grand or something like that for one that hits, but that's like base model, and then right. you got to jack it up from there. And uh, so like, just an anecdote, I used to live by... Uh, when I lived in Oak Ridge, my neighbor was this middle-aged family. They were, you know, sweet people. And their adult son lived with them still. And he was uh, probably 25, right, at the time. And I was 28, you know. I was 28, married, and had kids. And that was my own white trash thing going on. But I had a real job, children, married. And this guy's three years younger than me. He still lives with his parents. He was a nice guy. But I was also, in my head, I was kind of like, what are you doing dog (laughs) and uh he did kart racing right and his i didn't know what that was and that really added to my like jesus what are you doing it's like you're you're racing racing go-karts yeah but now having looked into it i don't think i was off base because that is where that's where kids start right and the idea is you move up from there right but his dad. But if you're not a kid and you want to start doing that, you still have to start in a car. I don't think. I, no, I think he started as a kid. Oh, and he never. Yeah, and uh, so I'm saying it makes it kind of sad. No, right? that's way yeah, sad. Right, because he was like uh, still doing it. But his dad had a. His dad had this gigantic garage back behind their house, and I used to go over there and borrow tools every now and then because I'm trash or whatever, and it looked like a fucking. To me, it looked like a goddamn pit crew in there. Right. It had like a hydraulic lift super and Super clean garage. Every super clean garage. Yeah. Everything's pristine and like every tool you could imagine all this stuff. He had a gigantic trailer. Uh, dude, it had to be tens of thousands of dollars is my point. Yeah, yeah, right. Tens of thousands of dollars poured into this cart operation for his son who never went anywhere, right? And no, and that guy, this family was just like a regular, he was like a fucking relatively high up, like a VP at some company that worked with the DOE or something like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right. But he poured so much money into this because like, that's what you have to do. So in the feeder programs for F1 over there, like there's the son of the sons of billionaires and shit. They're literally spending millions of dollars a year on their 10 year old yeah right cart racing career yeah like they've got fucking pit chiefs and shit and and, like everything you can imagine full-time mechanics all this stuff and and so like how can a regular person ever hope to compete with that yeah they can't you can't and so like that's how it ends up being that way and that's why it's for the ultra wealthy Major caveat, the biggest F1 driver in the world is Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, that's that dude that, that yeah. was in that trailer. He's yeah. the only prominent black uh, driver. and he's... Oh, wait, no, that's a different guy that I was thinking. He, that guy wasn't black that I was thinking about. Lewis Hamilton's huge, and he's black, yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. British. Uh, his dad was like a regular dude, and his dad worked like three jobs and put everything he had into... With him, it was, this is an investment, you're going to hit at this. Yeah, but I bet there's been a lot of working class dads who did that, like no, I know. my neighbor or whatever that well, no, didn't but hit. But that's but, what I was going to ask you, though, with those millionaire, but, billionaire people. Because, like, the, you know, we always talk about them. Like, they do throw money away, but their favorite thing is to make their money, make them money. When they're doing that for their kids, are they going, ah, they want to do this, whatever? Or are they going, one day he's going to make me millions of dollars racing this fucking car? I'm sure most of them think the latter, right, but right. they do it anyway, and it doesn't work out that way. And actually, you just remind me, there's a famous <laughs> quote from Ernest Hemingway, directly related to what you just said, that goes, the best way to make a small fortune in auto racing is to start out with a large one. Yeah. 
Because yeah, like, you're funny. pretty much going to lose it. You also just reminded me, I listened to a podcast episode with, I might be wrong, it was some Hollywood royalty. I think it was Scott Eastwood, Clint Eastwood's mm-hmm. son, I think. What a gorgeous man that But if it is. wasn't him, it was somebody like him. And it was like, before he like got into, when he was younger, he was going to be a big time race car driver. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about how like how much money his dad spent on his shit every year, and then he had a wreck and fucked some shit up or something, and it got derailed and it didn't happen. But he was talking about how insanely expensive it is to even pretend to compete right. in that world. And Lewis Hamilton and his dad both have said recently, like Lewis Hamilton's on a whole thing recently about how like the thing that I am, it will you, not ever exist again. Right? He's like like. It's no longer possible. Like right. you ain't never gonna see I was no, the last one. You ain't never gonna see nobody else like me. Not in a I'm a fucking generational talent way. Right. Meaning like it's literally the not possible. Closed. The door is closed. Yeah. It's not possible to be the thing that I am anymore. Right. Like if you're not from a family of extreme wealth and privilege, you're never ever gonna make it in this game. And that's just the way it is. Golf kind of you know? did the opposite of that. Like golf used to be exactly that. Like every single course was private and they cost so much money and the only way that you clubs were so expensive. I mean clubs are still expensive, but like, you know, then you know, dude like John Daly comes through or whatever and they're like now there's more public courses or like you you can be a farm kid and make it on the PGA tour. Whereas like back in the sixties, you couldn't do that. But yeah, with this F one shit, like, no, it's, it's only gone up. Right. That's crazy. So then the other side of the coin, the redneck side, NASCAR, which has its roots in what you were saying earlier. Bootlegging. Yeah. Well, yes, we're bootlegging, but I'm saying buying a regular car and making it hit. Yeah. Yeah. Through, you know, redneck ingenuity or yeah. whatever. So I'm sure most people know, but still the fucking, you know, Cliff Notes version of it. NASCAR's origins were with bootleggers during Prohibition. They had to run liquor, run moonshine and running from the cops, running from the cops who did not have for them. Uh, and they had to be faster than the law. So they took stock cars, factory cars, and they souped them up. It made them as fast as possible. And again, with men and how they dicks be, it was only a matter of time before some of them was like, I bet mine beats yours. Mm -hmm. He's like, my ass it will. Yeah. (laughs) You know? And then it's like, well. I bet so much money. That's exactly how that first conversation. My ass it will. Yeah. And then, you know, they were like, next thing you know, they're down at the dirt track. They built a whole dirt track. Probably. Yeah, really, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Fucking, we settle this pissed. right now. <laughs> yeah. It's out there with fucking a tractor and shit, yeah. still cussing at each other, yeah. making an oval. <laughs> fucking, call your mama, tell her, come over and watch me whoop your ass on tell Sunday. Tell her to bring a scarf. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, but that, like, that literally is pretty much how it happens. Yeah, for like sure. They, yeah, yeah, like they, 100%. Like, they start, like, these dudes, these bootleggers, were souping these cars up to get away from the law. They met and knew each other. They talked shit to each other. Say, well, let's settle this on the fucking road. Yeah. And then they started racing. And next thing you know, that becomes NASCAR. So NASCAR's got some serious hillbilly roots, you know. And now, don't you think it's kind of done a little? It bit It has. Of that? And I was I was gonna get into that, but I guess we can go ahead and talk about that now. Yeah. The yes, it is also na- sadly I would say sadly for sure sadly NASCAR is kind of the same way now. Yeah. And it's for the same reasons. I mean, that dude, that guy I live beside, like he wasn't trying to get to Formula One. Right. He was trying to get to NASCAR. Right. You know what I mean? Like kids start out in kart racing that want to be in NASCAR too. Like it's the same exact thing. Like you pretty much have to be rich. I don't think it's like quite because Formula One drivers, there's literally 20 Formula One drivers in the world. That what? 20, 20, maybe 21. 20 or 21. That's fucking nuts. Right. So, like, it's not as fucking hardcore and exclusive, but, like, if you... Nowadays, if you want to make it in NASCAR, you got to come from a family with money, pretty much. It's the same thing. But the fan base, though, yeah, remains extremely redneck. For sure. Did, yeah. you, did you get into how they build these F1 tracks and shit? The tracks? No. Yeah, what do so, you mean? I don't know... A lot about it, but like I'm pretty sure that like it's so NASCAR is like Talladega just there, you know what I mean? Like, it, <laughs> well, I mean somebody built it. I know, but 
I'm saying it's there and it will be there <laughs> yeah. next year. Okay. All right. Yeah, F1 yeah. ain't like it that. It is just there. You're but right. But F1's not like that. Oh, okay. They, come they change in, it every they year? They come in, like, I, I could like be moving wrong. moving the holes on a golf course but or like something? They're, so, like, they're coming in right now. There's about to be an F1 race in Miami, and it's a big deal because, like, we ain't had one, you know, uh, down here or whatever. But now it's big here. So, like, they're coming in, and it's taking them a long time to get this shit done, and they're basically building a town, like an F1 hit center, but, like, it's not going to remain that. Okay, but, no, I didn't get into any of this, but I'm saying... Because I don't think F1's just a straight round shot. I'm it's like this is, shit, isn't it? I think there's different versions. Yeah. Some of them are, like, circles. Some of them are, like, street races or whatever, yeah, I but think. I don't, no, well, they're not street races, but they're not my point just is, ovals, I don't, but... I don't think that it's going to remain there, and yeah, then they'll but, come back and do an F one race. But but it's like a traveling circus or some shit like Miami, that. But Miami, though, is it not the whole deal? Like that's a huge deal because there hasn't been one there before. It's like having the Olympics somewhere. Yeah. Whereas maybe. most of the other F, I don't know this. I'm saying I'm sure there's a lot of F one staples that they race at every year, and yeah. they probably stay like Talladega. Like it's just there. Yeah, I, but don't, if I they, don't know. If they add a new I feel track like they, or I something, think that I, I, for the way I was hearing, it, I thought it was kind of like what you're saying with the golf holes. Like they 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 be changing it. I think I'm talking way out of my ass because again, I don't watch this. I hear other people talk about it who mm. have watched it, but the way they were talking about it is like, yeah, the F one's coming. And like they were because they were talking about like, oh, we got to go, and they were like, well, we can't go. And Stu Gotts was like, we're a fucking sports show. Of course we can go. They're like, dude, the cheapest ticket you can get is like twenty thousand dollars right they don't want us there yeah right like they this is not a thing like it's not for people and so they started talking about it like that and they were like well if that's the case then like it doesn't really matter where this fucking thing is if only billionaires can get into it they're gonna fly to anywhere so it's not like really it's really attracting the people of miami to it it's helping the economy surrounding it so that's my point is like i don't know what like I don't know if they're going to come back to it or if they just like kind of pick up and go, all right, well, we're out of here. Thanks. See ya. Like, it's just a weird, like, we can't just go to an F1 race is my point. No, I know. Yeah. It's like, uh, like Monaco, right? That's yeah. F1, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, that's definitely every year. Yeah. All you right. know what I'm saying? I'm sorry talking out of my ass. No, I'm saying, I think the Miami thing is like, they F1 have one has a mix of and permanent, permanent and temporary <laughs> tracks, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Street okay, so circ- it's half street right. circuits so- like Monaco. I say a- Azerbaijan. That's a fucking staple on the F. I would not have thought that, but only because it's got a wild name. Azerbaijan. Oh, Singapore. That makes sense. But uh, yeah. Okay. I was thinking of Oksana Bayul. So it says the 2020 season had zero temporary tracks. Okay, so they mainly use permanent tracks. Okay. So every now and then, so like the Miami situation is like a special situation. And for the record, it could be staying there permanently. I just, I knew that I had heard this whole thing about how like it's a billionaire's traveling circus and they sometimes just come in and lay this shit down and then they're just like, all right, arrivederci, Uh which is how they would say goodbye. Right. They're Italian. All the billionaire, well, Ferrari and them. Yeah, Ferrari's always hit real hard at that. When I think of F one racing, I know it's you just think of somebody Ferrari? going, hey, 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 ciao, ciao, yeah, yeah. Right. espresso, no yeah. X, yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and then there's like the one of the very first races, high profile races that still goes to this day was the uh, the 24 hours at Le Mans, Le Mans, Le Mans. It looks like Le Mans. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lemon. L L E space M A N S. Is that the man? <laughs> yeah, I believe that's French for the man. This will hit. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know. Fucking yeah. Uh yeah, it's anyway, it was like when I back back in the day when they were running twelve mile an hour races and shit. Twenty four hours, huh? Yeah, dude. That that, that that would hit. For who? I mean, if we went there. I mean we can't. I don't but, know, dude. You think a 24-hour car race would hit? Yeah. Okay. If I took some Adderall and fucking drank Bush Light all day, that'd be fucking well, awesome. This is like <laughs> arguably the premier uh, event in all of motorsports. So yeah, since 19- I've never even heard of this shit. Are you serious? I don't think so. Yeah, dude. This is like the... This I is believe you. I'm not calling you a liar. Thing. And it, it's like, again, this is, that. this is like maybe literally... It's one of, if not the first big... Uh, you know, I'm sure motorsports events, and it goes on to this day. If you you didn't see uh, 
uh, Ford versus Ferrari with Matt Damon I hadn't seen and Christian it yet, Bale. No, it's on my list. It's, it's a- about this. Okay. It's about how Carroll Shelby tried to get Ford competitive with Ferrari uh, in the 24 hours at Le Mans because yeah, no, American American cars they never could hit over there. Right. It was but all then when fucking, they had the Shelby Mustang. It was fucking Ferrari and uh yeah. Mercedes and all them, right? Yeah. And then Is that movie hit? Carol, yeah, fuck yeah, that movie hit. I'm sorry. I knew that it was a big budget movie, but I never I just never saw it. It's on my it's literally on and when I say on my list like literally, you know how you make a list on HBO yeah. Max, so it's it's on my list, but yeah. But so then anyway, homie die in that? No, he don't die. But then there's he get burnt. They sleep during the race. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. How does that in how? the car? Like one of the dude, like there's know. says in theory you can get five hours sleep over the course of the race. Hold up, maybe they they got to switch out or they, something. Right, right, right. But um, so it's like all night barbecue smoking thing. But so talking about redneck and NASCAR for a little bit, we already talked about Dale Earnhardt. Won't you tell that story real quick about? Uh, me walking that lady when we did that. Oh my god! Show that time. Well, will you? So I'm gonna have to call to you to tell the joke because I don't. Oh, I don't even. I mean, I barely. It was no. You tell the story first, then because I think that makes it even funnier. Is what the joke was? Yeah, yeah, was right, right, right. Yeah, you tell. So, but, so, so we're doing. Actually, I still have that poster yeah. at my house, and it really. And I had it framed, and it's so funny thinking back on like what that show was. Yeah, it was just a piece of shit bar show. Yeah, but. Me and you, who had probably, we'd known each other for a little while, but we had really just become like really good buddies. Yeah. You know, we were really good buddies and we were co-headlining, yeah. which I don't know if anybody out there in the universe, if you're a comedian listening to this, you know exactly what co-headlining means. What co-headlining means is both of us have an ego and only 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all that means. That's all that fucking means. That means either one of us could go first or last. We've only got a certain amount of time and no one wants to be like, well, I'm not opening for you. Well, we'll co-headline. We're co-headlining. So we're co-headlining this show at a bar. I remember Christine Kinsey was there. Like I said, I still got the poster frame. And uh, I... I know that you were going, that I opened because this wouldn't have happened any other way. I'm outside smoking a cigarette back when I still smoke cigarettes. And I'm out there, definitely had a good set because that's all we do, you know. I'm out there smoking a cigarette, just feeling it. And I, <laughs> I'm talking to maybe Matt Ward or somebody and we're laughing. And this fucking woman storms out. I mean, just fucking like almost knocks the door off the hinges coming out of the bar. And she's just huffing and puffing, cussing her fucking ass off. And the only thing going on in there was Trey doing comedy. So I'm like, I'm immediately like, oh, shit, what is this? So I go up and I go, hey, how you doing? She goes, you were funny as shit. We're getting the fuck out of here, though. And I go, what, 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 what's wrong? And she goes, I will be goddamn. She starts like not full on crying, but tearing up. I'm not going to say she was wearing a Tweety Bird shirt as a dress. <laughs> <laughs> but in my mind, yeah. she was wearing a Tweety Bird shirt as a dress. This is in Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, by the Tennessee, way. wearing a Tweety Bird shirt as a dress. Got her hair teased up like she's going to get her glamour shots and shit. Got fucking purple mascara on and shit. Pulling a Virginia Slim out of her pocketbook with tears rolling down her eyes. And I was like, what is wrong? And she goes, I will not sit here while someone talks about Dale Earnhardt like that. <laughs> And I'm sitting there, and I immediately know. I go, "There's no way." Yeah, right. I mean, there's no way. And I go, yeah. "What? What did he say?" And she obviously couldn't think it would be you. Yeah. She, in her mind, yeah. you would talk shit about Dale Earnhardt, and there was nothing I could do. No. And I and I fucking I'm like, "Okay, bye, yeah. see ya." And she leaves. And then all I remember is I came up to you afterwards, and you yeah. go, "I would no, never." I know. <laughs> yeah. You came up and told me that happened, and, and literally the first I saw, I was like, first of all, I would never." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and literally all. The joke's about the plates on the wall, Yes, right? I was talking yeah. about not knowing I was white trash and, like, going to my rich girlfriend's house and all their plates were the same. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? And I was like, "These pl- why do your plates match? That's weird. Yeah. You know, I was like, and none of them got Dale Earnhardt on them or nothing because, like, Rednecks had Dale Earnhardt plates and shit. That's li- that's literally the only thing. So do she you- was just drunk and Hold fucking on. stupid. But the- let's, let's reverse it. Do you think that what it really was about was that you talked about how Corey. only... You, you talked about how only this. white trash people do that, and she's got Dale Earnhardt plates on her wall, so she oh, was really upset about that. I guess maybe, but, but most she definitely white trash are fucking proud, proud of it. Well, and also, <laughs> and also, her words to me were, "He talked shit about Dale Earnhardt." Yeah, which I did not. Again, yeah, well, of I course, would never. you would never, right? Uh, 
So anyway, yeah, Redneck's pretty pretty crazy about NASCAR. Dale Earnhardt specifically is definitely a uh, a bit of a deity. Look uh, at them too. The king and the prince. Also, I say Jeff Gordon, you say Gay. There it is. There it is. And I'm a fat <laughs> That was so Pavlov's dumb fuck. God damn it. I don't mean it. I don't mean it. You motherfucker, you could have got me to say um fuck. I'm so glad you didn't say Lil Wayne. So so for the record oh, yeah, that worked I, like a charm. For the record, though. I was a huge I was a Jeff Gordon fan because of that. Not that was the I'm best like, throwaway like a, line right there. Not, not because I'm like a, a big champion, but I always liked, whenever my friends didn't like something for some stupid reason, I, I always like, like Goldust. Yes, Goldust, no, Goldust, dude, I like hear in, you. No. In wrestling, they didn't like Goldust because he was in garage, so Goldust was my favorite. I've always, so, anything that pisses off shitty so, white people or whatever, I love, so, so I Jeff hear Gordon you. Was my, yeah. But that was fucking, I yeah. mean, boy, you, how yeah. long have you been wanting to do that? I mean, just, I thought, I don't know. Not, yeah. yeah, like, I just wanted to talk about how that was a thing with rednecks, yes. but I knew if I teed it up, you know, you'd knock it out the park, which Everybody you did. go, if you want to hear more about this, uh, just go listen to Tim Wilson's classic, Jeff Gordon's Gay, Yeah, uh, which is a great song that touches on all those things, but the whole point of the song is that Jeff Gordon really hits. Foxworthy had a bit about it, too. He was yeah. like, yeah, rednecks don't like Jeff Gordon, because Jeff Gordon enunciates. <laughs> And they just really ain't no place for that sort of thing in NASCAR. <laughs> Mike Papa, Mike uh, Papa, Whiskey Bowl Papa, you know, he yeah. was a huge gearhead. He owned a car lot, massive car guy. And, and Jeff Gordon was his favorite racer. Because yeah. and, and he won. He and, he, awesome. and, and, I, and I was like, well, why do you like Jeff Gordon? He's like, because he wins, son. He does. He's the man. Drove the Dupont you know? 24, buddy. Like he respected greatness. You know what I mean? So listen. I mean, I was pretty much done anyway, but I ain't going to try to follow that because that really hit for me. So I say, let's just do <laughs> let's just do Professor Joe. Now. All right, we'll be right back after this with a little history lesson on Nero. Our next sponsor has a product that I use literally every day. Uh, as y'all know, I've been, or maybe you don't know, I've been getting a little little healthy on a healthy kick. I've lost like fifty or sixty pounds, gotten a little toned up. And, uh, you know, I, I'm on the road a lot and I don't have time to get all the nutrients that I need at every single meal. So with athletic greens, I was able to get better gut health, more energy, optimize immune system. And, uh, you know, didn't have to take any pills or vitamins. It was just this nice little powder that I put in some water and it tastes super good. It doesn't even taste healthy at all. It's, uh, it's just wonderful. So what, what is this you might ask? Well, with one delicious scoop, of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, which by the way, Trey, learning that word for the first time to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your recovery, focus, and aging. All that stuff. Trey, tell us about it. That's right. So, you know, it's really, it's couldn't be easier to incorporate it into your daily routine. You just mix it with a little bit of water and take it down. It's got like a nice sort of tropical taste mm-hmm. to it, I would call it. It's, uh, it doesn't, it don't taste like, you know, like it's super health food stuff. It tastes pretty good. It's mild and pleasant is how I would describe the taste yeah. of it. Um, and we, you know, we've sent this stuff around to family and friends. Uh, our, our buddy Drew is a massive devotee of Athletic Greens now. He sure an Athletic Greens cult, I think he'd be in it. It's, it's mm-hmm. helping a lot of people out. And uh, Athletic Greens, you know, it's lifestyle friendly. If you're, It doesn't matter if you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, any of that stuff, then Athletic Greens is still totally good for you in your day-to-day. It costs you less than $3 a day. That ain't nothing. To, mm-hmm. that, uh, that's the amount of money you're spending to invest in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit, all right? And just so y'all know, Athletic Greens is a climate-neutral certified company. Uh, in, in 2020, Athletic Greens purchased carbon credits that support protecting old growth rainforests. So they're giving back and doing the right thing as well. So you, you can feel good about supporting them while you also get your own health back on track with Athletic Greens. So right That's now, right. It's, time to, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash POA. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash POA 
to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Do it to it. Are you feeling stuck making minimum payments on your credit card debt? SaveWithConrad.com can help, and you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Oh, and did I mention no house payments for two months? Get rid of your credit card debt and lower your monthly payments right now at SaveWithConrad.com. All right, now it's time for another stirring rendition of History of Professor Cho on the subject of Emperor Nero. I always tell you what I know about the subject at hand before we start. I referenced it earlier. I know he reportedly fiddled while Rome burned Mm -hmm. and was a real right prick, that Nero. Bit of a lunatic who didn't hit for people. I assume that means he fucked a lot of boys and killed a lot of people. That's everything I know. Do we even need to do the segment? <laughs> Later. <laughs> See ya. Hit it, Lydia. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, you're dead on with a lot of that stuff. Is that, that him? That, yeah, they, they've rednecked well, him up. They, that he one. looks red as... That looks like Wayne Bob that I went to high school with. It, it also kind Wayne of, Bob, he had a fucked I mean, up hand and everything. <laughs> uh, he's got that dirt bag beard. He looks like... That is the dirt baggiest like, beard. That's some bitch cut meth my Uncle Bubbles, dude. <laughs> He looks like Michael Schur when he played Dwight's uh, cousin yeah, on, in, on yeah, Office. Yeah, right. yeah, uh, yeah. That's him. Mo's. And, yeah, Mo's. And for the record, so you know, spoilers. Nero died at thirty, so that's you know he he was like, and that looked like a fucking haggard ass fifty year old or something. Yeah, Nero uh, was born Lucius. I don't know why I said it like that. Lucius, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucius uh, Domitus. I practiced this before we came over here. <laughs> Lucius Domitus Anabarabbas, 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 An- Anabarbus, uh, in 37 uh, AD, but he was renamed Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus yeah. when his yeah because that was like all yeah. of his his mother uh, uh, Agrippina uh, she married Emperor Claudius in 39 CE and she was like a relative of. Caesar and Augustus and Claudius, like, you know that they're all fucking each other and shit. Like, that goes way back several episodes. His daddy died when he was three. Uh, As I wrote that down, it sounded like a boy named Sue. His daddy died when he was three, uh, and he was named... When you put a G and an N, what that is? Nah. Nah. His name Gnaeus. was his name Gnaeus. was Gnaeus, Gnaeus Domitus, and he was a super violent uh, motherfucker, and everyone thought he was just a huge bag of shit. And one time, uh, to prove everyone correct, he intentionally ran over a small child with his chariot. Yeah. So first race car driver. Yeah. Uh, when Nero was born, his father reportedly said, "Any son of his and Agrippina's is going to be a complete bag of shit and unliked by everyone." Okay, that hits. I'm sorry, you just reminded me. You we went out on such a hater of the race car driving segment mm-hmm. with the Jeff Gordon thing. You, I forgot to mention. You just reminded me, the wealthiest athlete in all of history was actually a charioteer in ancient Rome. Really. So, like, race car driving has kind of always, always been, been that way. Billion- yeah, and it, How w- did he it make was like the for- for cha- winning charioteers were like the Formula One drivers of ancient Rome, and it hit real hard for them even back then. So we've always been about that shit. His name was Diocles, yeah, and he made he got yeah, sponsorships too, didn't he? Yeah, right. And he his winnings and stuff like in today's money was like fucking hundreds of millions of dollars so, or something like that so yeah it's just a so, fun well, fact no, i'll get back to nero in a second but this is still kind of tangentially related with the romans and stuff like that did you know that so there was a whole scene damn it no don't 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 because you want to talk about this later yeah, i do i've okay, got i've right. got a thing later. you know what i'm about to I've say i've got a thing i do know what you're about to say and i've got a thing about this right. later so stay tuned for a future episode yeah. of putting on airs where we will cover what he was about to cover <laughs> okay all of them uh like i said nero's mother was the daughter of agrippina the elder and the great granddaughter of emperor augustus uh agrippina's older brothers were starved to death uh her youngest brother was emperor caligula which can i oh. tell you that 
I don't know how it wasn't that long ago that I realized that Caligula was a real person. I have heard the name Caligula my whole life, and I always thought that was like a synonym for the devil. Because it, doesn't it sound like the devil, like Caligula? Like, doesn't that sound like a demon or something? I mean, I knew he was a lunatic emperor yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and I've always heard like, oh, that's like Caligula. And it just, that, yeah. to me, I was, every time I would hear that, it was just about some demonic shit. Yeah. Indulgence. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, hedonism, Caligula must be a uh, demon yeah. or something hedonism, like that. Hedonism, fucking horses, throwing up in hallways and well, stuff. Which I didn't know this, Caligula, uh, he had a short run. Do you know that? Because he was actually murdered. I feel like a lot of these guys have pretty short. I runs, mean, yeah. Actually. I mean, Nero dies at thirty. He was murdered by his own uh, Praetorian guard. So now her uncle Claudius uh, is on the throne. Claudius. Who, so then her husband dies, uh, and she goes to hook up with Emperor Claudius because, like, he's on the throne. She's like, "I'm gonna get up in this." That's she's how also, they do. Yeah. that's how they do. She's also like related to him. She'd been seeing him at all the Roman barbecues and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, that's how they did. And uh, uh, he was widowed, by the way, because uh, he had had his wife executed uh for mm, cheating you'll on have, you'll have that cheating on him and some sort of attempted treason which most people think that it was just like she did something that didn't hit and he was just right. like we'll just like not her. give him a son or yeah, something so or ba- she had done that so already, basically but- back then what ha- what would happen was like a woman wouldn't hit right they'd call her a whore and kill her yes yes but they, they stayed doing that Yes, but they wouldn't just go to the public and be like, she was a whore that didn't hit, so I killed her. Right. They would go like, look, she was, you know, yeah. like they, she's fucking this horse. So it's just, I found out about it. You yeah. can't have that. But it's just. It's so just, I had her garroted. Well, had it's her interesting. Strangled. The reason I even bring it up like that is it's interesting. Like you, you we, know how women are. We, and they were all like, we do. Yeah. <laughs> we, we hear the whole story now. You know, so in our minds, you just go, yeah, the king just did whatever the fuck he want and blah, blah, blah. But like back then, like they still played PR moves. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the king wouldn't yeah, well, just. I thought the Romans, they were like, they like politics. Yeah. Politics and PR and stuff. I always, in my head, it's like the Romans invented all that shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? for sure. But like, I, I always, mean, they didn't. I'm sure they had politics in fucking ancient Babylon, too. Well, they they, but they you, invented you, democracy or right, you know, yeah, whatever yeah, it right, is. But like, yeah. I, in my mind, it was always just like, yeah, the king would just murder you for whatever. And everyone knew that. But it's like, no, everyone didn't know that. When the king killed somebody, everyone was told. Yes. Yeah, oh, bullshit. well, it was because. Of, right. Yeah, right. But I, I'd never really thought about those fucking things. Because the king was supposed to be like infallible and everything. Yes. So like, and, and sometimes it wasn't people even, would like the king. It wasn't even that they were worried about uh, uprisings or whatever. It's just like the king is supposed to be basically a god. A god. Yeah, I mean, and literally, god, and literally, god, god blood can't be doing no petty shit like that. Exactly. So you got to make some stuff up. So she goes and she's fucking Claudius, and they were engaged very briefly, and then she, he married Agrippina, and she insisted that Claudius legally adopt. Nero, which he did in 50 AD. So then 54 AD, Emperor Claudius up and died under mysterious circumstances. Those mysterious circumstances that almost every single royal ends up dying under. How old was Nero when that happened? You know, uh, like are we talking about, I mean, he had to be pretty young. Well, right? like a kid. Yeah, he was 16. 16. And okay. I mean, I doesn't say here, but like he becomes like, right. he, and that's when he, he became the emperor. So was the 16. people assume that he, uh, Poisoned this dude with his mom with Moon's Bane or Acropena, and it wasn't. <laughs> what is Moon's Bane? I don't know. Yeah, but Fucking it sounds good. Nightshade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, slipped yeah. Nightshade yeah. into his milk wine. of the pulpy. Milk of the, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so no, it it he ate a bowl of mushrooms. Yeah, as you do. You or not do that? And then he was just like, oh, I don't hit. And then he took the long sleep. Um. So everyone assumed. That's like this was Agrippina because he was poisoned and women, women be poisoning. Po- women do be poisoning, dude. That's the fucking ancient Rome, like hack comedy joke. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> women be, be poisoning, poisoning. And, but they did though. Yeah. And what's funny is she was so she was just like <laughs> she was like oh oh okay. So, yeah, I poisoned my husband. Everybody thinks I poisoned my husband just because women poison people, and then my son's going to be the emperor, sure. And then everybody's like, 
but you poisoned your last husband. Yeah, and she's right. like, true. Right, yeah. True. I did. She, I, did, I, did, I, did I did. I did do that shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she looks like a big poisoner. Dude, she poisoned the shit out of motherfuckers. Yeah. So <laughs> it's basically, everybody assumes this, but then it's it's basically later confirmed to some scholars because like Nero made it like this big point of his when he got a little bit older to just like, he would eat mushrooms all the time and just like talk about, mm, the the food of the gods and they were like this is him being an asshole right this is him being like this yeah. is why i'm here because his adopted daddy got killed and by he'd mushrooms. gotten like super cocky he was like, what kind of fucking pussy yeah right would get killed by mushrooms look how hard these mushrooms hit for me yeah because i hit but that was imagine if these mushrooms killed me like yeah. a bitch but but <laughs> but it was also a little bit of that just being cocky like hiding in plain sight like yes i know i know yeah, that's right. exactly what it was right. yeah, and yeah. i don't give a yeah. fuck yeah i'm glad she did that shit uh, you know what i love is mushrooms that don't kill, kill me. me and living yeah mushrooms and living the mother <laughs> mushrooms keep them away from me <laughs> so <laughs> so claudius it what was weird about this whole thing is that claudius actually had a i don't like using this term but it's the only way that people know he, he had a legitimate son like he, nero was his adopted son so it's weird that he ended up assuming the throne because he had a legitimate, which again, I don't like using that term. That Doesn't that feel weird to use the term legitimate? Like, I don't like that. That don't, I, people know what I'm talking about, but like, I, that just feels gross to me. Like, you're like, this one's not legitimate. I mean, the alternative is bastard, ain't it? So <laughs> yeah. that's the nicer yeah. term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Illegitimate's better than bastard for sure. I don't know. I do know I'd rather be called mean. a bastard yeah. than be called I do, illegitimate. I do know what you mean because it's like uh it's like how, you know, they used to call Wow. I'm just gonna say it the way I was gonna say it because <laughs> It's like how they used to call cripples invalids. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> and it's like neither wait, one of those things hit. Wait, but did like, they call them inval cripples before they called them invalids, or invalids before cripples? Because to me, invalid sounds like a very. I, I still say invalid. You're not supposed to. I thought that was medical. I mean, I think it started out as medical, but I'm saying, like, think about that. It's what you're saying. Invalid. About it. Yes. They're invalid. This is an invalid human being. Right. They ought not be. Right. Is what that, I, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying that's what that word implies. Like, this yeah. person is not a valid human. And you're saying it's like someone has a child. This is not a legitimate child. Right. Now, I'll say in my head, I always thought it's like, just like, that's legitimately not your child. No, but it but it is their child though. But yeah, I'm right. Saying, but like, I don't know. It's just like if it's you're just, married and you it's have just kids, marriage. If you're yeah. married, that's all and, it is. If you're right? married and you have kids, there's uh, it's just God. I don't know. Right? No, you're right. I mean, you're right. You're right. But like, I get the historical need for a differentiation between children of marriage especially where noble people and shit like that are concerned versus bastards <laughs> <laughs> but there was a time before like bastard was just the it word they kind of wild that bastard there was just the word they came up with and then people said it to people I mean, to is make there it a politically correct term for what we're talking about that we're just not thinking of no it well, isn't that wild in twenty twenty two that yes. somebody hasn't been like, no, no. we are we're fucking, not bastards. We're, we're like married parents challenge adjacent, yeah, yeah right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Well, like, email us at putting on airs yeah. at gmail dot com if you figured it out. So when Nero first comes into power, he sort of does what most modern day presidents do and just does away with all of Claudius's shit. You know, like Claudius had like built up all this stuff and Nero's like, nah, we're going to do things uh, a little bit different. He also talked mad shit about him. Uh, like he he was uh, he, he called him this is his stepdaddy, by the way, who took care of him. And then like on his like choking out poison yeah. death who bed, he killed with mushrooms. Who he, yeah, right. He called him a doddering old fool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But by the way, a lot like Henry the Eighth. So Nero, you know, we remember him as like a piece of shit and like a horrible person. But like much like Henry the Eighth, he actually started off like everyone kind of loved him. Like he came in and he's this young emperor and he's pretty and he could sing and he's he could, pretty. He's pretty. <laughs> Look at, I, 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 I seen that no, motherfucker. Yeah, but you said, that motherfucker. Yeah, but you've seen what they that do. That ain't it. 
Was that pretty in ancient Rome? God damn. <laughs> Every gladiator movie I've ever seen been lying have to me, seen, which like, I'm sure they have. You see the pictures but, of women back, uh, dude. Somebody thought Mona Lisa could get it. You know uh, what I'm saying? Like uh, they didn't look good back then. Uh, they look like shit. It's funny. He's fine th- in that other one. It's funny to think that that dude was a fucking knockout. G. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, well, who he could get it. So when Nero comes in, all the people like him. That fucking trailer monster right there. <laughs> the reason that the people liked him. Is because Uh-oh. first off, he he does away with a lot of Claudius' shit, and he actually wants to give more power to the Senate. Now, the reason that he wants to give more power to the Senate is so because he ain't got to do shit. He wants to delegate his responsibilities yeah. so that he can go fuck a bunch of <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, dog, that's what's yeah. up. And because make he, a hit. <laughs> well, I mean, but it's a good I mean, look. If you're a fucking sixteen year old kid, that's actually oh, the smartest thing a sixteen year old right. kid could you're do. Right. You're right. You're hundred percent right. Like goddamn, like you're hundred percent right. So he, what? The if re- we fuck it, if somehow a sixteen year old kid, well, I mean, our Senate super don't hit. Right. But either way, if a sixteen year old kid was given control of this country tomorrow. And then they said, I'd rather give most of this power to Congress. And Congress, yeah. Again, our Congress fucking sucks. Right. But, like, that would hit for me. Right. Because that's better. I mean, yeah, you're right. That's what you would hope a 16-year-old would do. Yeah. But obviously it was because he wanted to fuck whores and do yada yeah, yada. Right. But, He's 16. But, right. So, but a lot of it was he he loved, you know, you said playing the fiddle. Uh, playing the, it's called the liar, uh, L Y R E, L Y R E, L Y R E, that fucking yeah. like that harpsichord looking motherfucker or whatever. So, <laughs> so sorry. He he really liked doing that. He wrote poetry. He liked to act, and by all uh, uh, records, he was like actually pretty pretty good. Like not, it wasn't like you know we talked about Henry the Eighth, where like he, Henry the Eighth actually could compose, but like his poetry was shit. But people just kept letting him do it. This guy actually had some eh, pretty good chops. Like he was all right, and he had, but he actually liked to go perform in like the town square and stuff. And that is one of the reasons that the people really liked him because back then, that was seen as like. He ought not have been doing that for his class. Like, he is to be entertained, not to entertain. Oh, right. Like, entertainers back then were like whores, right? Yes, whores. Yeah, right. Like, so right. because he liked doing that and would perform for people, they were like, this guy's like one of us, man. Like, he's, you know, he's for the working man. And but also, it's just like he's like he's like the rich kid with a guitar at a high yeah. school party. Yeah, he you sure is. Like, anyway, here's Wonder Wonder Wall, Wall. Yeah, Nero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but to give the guy a little bit of credit, so he he's he's doing working man stuff like acting in plays and writing poetry and singing and fiddling, which is so funny because that's not working man shit nowadays. Right. Like if 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 somebody in Chickamauga was doing that, they'd be like, that is not a working man. Yeah. That is not a man. First off yeah mo something queer <laughs> <laughs> fiddling fiddling is not respected and so, yeah, oh, yeah, fiddling, fiddling would hit fiddling would hit. Hit. yeah we yeah. got some fiddlers so yeah, fiddling would hit. so but so the working class kind of <laughs> likes him but then you he kind of doubles down on it and gives them really good reason because not only has he delegated all the responsibility to the senate and they have a lot more power and first off the senators loved him like the Senate and all these people, they they loved him because they were like, oh, yeah. fuck yeah, we get to do he shit. He empowered him. He empowered yeah, him. Right, yeah. He also fucking slashed taxes to like almost no fucking taxes. So like he was just like, I don't believe in him. That ain't fair. I tell you what, I'm starting to think Nero yeah. is. He also, when we get to the raping and stuff, because so, he's hidden from me so far. No, I know. So <laughs> and he also, and this is kind of a contradictory thing because they also loved him because like Claudius didn't throw a lot of bashes. You know, like kings used to do, but Nero's like, fuck that, man. We're partying. So, like, he brings the, like, the- Get the Christians out here. (laughs) Feed them to the lions. Make a hit. (laughs) We're going to get to that shit. We're going to get to that shit, which, by the way, kind of hit for me. And so, but he he threw parties. Like, he had the gladiator shit going on. He was like, it's free. Fucking come in, you know? But then it's like he cut all the taxes. So, it's like, I hate to be this guy, but it's like- Nero, somebody's got to pay for this shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, you're, yeah, right, you're like, right, eventually, right. somebody's going to have to pay for this shit. Uh, so, 
Anyways, the, uh, uh, we talked about the Roman. Uh, well, okay, so while, while Nero is doing all his singing and shit, uh, his mama is assuming more power because she's kind of taking like a Circe role or Cer- Circe role. Mm-hmm. You know, she's like the queen regent. It's like, he's 16, he's diddling whores. The Senate's got all this, but I'm the fucking bitch talking to the Senate. You know what I mean? Like, you want something with Nero, he's out fit, literally fiddle fucking around. Mm-hmm. You, come, you come talk to me. Uh, so... She gets real braggadocious about all this, and it kind of like gets back to Nero that like, oh yeah, so your mama's running the fucking show, and that does not hit for him at all. Uh, this this uh, pisses him off, and now he's got to kill her. You know, like he's he's he he has to kill her. But instead of a normal method of poisoning, he decided to go all out, and he had like specialists, like not flown in, but like boated in. Uh, rotten it, mushrooms. No, man. <laughs> no, man. He was going way, way more elaborate. They came up, they they created and he helped design this um, smooshing mechanism. <laughs> a mechanism with which to smoosh a bitch. Yeah. And they were going to put it like above her bed. The bitch smusher 3000. The bitch smusher 3000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. They got that drawled up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a uh, uh, so so. <laughs> they're going to do it's basically this thing. The bitch smusher three thousand would yeah. go above her bed, and then while she's sleeping, I guess somebody would come in, pull a chain, and yeah. smoosh this bitch. Yeah. Well, it There's was so many easier ways I, to I, yeah. kill your mama. Yeah. So than to like fucking procure the development of the bitch smusher 3000 and he tried a couple but yeah. so this one didn't work because he couldn't get her out of the house long enough for them to, to like to fucking to build, build an entire smusher. mechanism yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no shit yeah especially in ancient rome so he's like but dude imagine contracting for a bitch smusher 3000 right now and it's like and imagine getting amber out of the house long enough for a contractor to come in and to install a bitch smusher 3000 yeah in your fucking bedroom like when then one of them contractors Actually, be like, why don't you just give her a bottle of vodka and a jet ski? Yeah. I think it'll take care of itself. Uh, but and also that too, like all these, like she's a powerful woman. All these people know her, and they're like, they, he's having to tell. It's like whoever Batman contracted to make right. the Batcave. Yeah. It's like, did he so, kill that guy? He had to. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So so right. yeah. So he's like, fuck that. I guess I'll drown her. All right. It's way easier. Well, it, it, like, you'd think, but yeah. he, but, but he couldn't just like grab her and hold her under the fucking water. So he has oh, specialists. Wait till come the in. slaves are cleaning their titties or whatever, he, and she's all fucking. He has speci- relaxed. He then, has specialists to come in and design him slash her this boat. That she could, he's too extra. I know. That's I what know, he is. I know. This so motherfucker. <laughs> he. This is the most extra ass motherfucker. So basically, that it's ever been. That's his problem. He I want, can already tell. He was, his downfall was being too extra. extra. Yeah. He he wants them to design this boat that would like go out a little ways and then collapse. <laughs> yeah. And then when, but it worked. Yeah. But she was only like. 40 fucking yards so she just got <laughs> no, out and a little more of a ways yeah so she just got out that was too little of a ways yeah so she gets out and uh swims and so everything's fine and so he was like all right so he stabbed her to death <laughs> he, he was like well, let's just do that yeah or yeah. just done that yeah, yeah. exactly so <laughs> he gets married to octavia which was actually claudius's daughter so it's his stepsister sure uh oh Ooh. mm-hmm what are you doing, stepsister? Mm-hmm. I love those porns. Of course, we all do. All this is while he was having an affair with Papa Sabina, who was pregnant with his child. So in order to marry her, he did what, once again, Henry the Eighth would later do and had his wife accused of adultery, exiled, and later murdered, although he was sweet enough to make it look like suicide. Uh, it's actually also rumored that his new wife, Pape, may have had a hand in helping uh, kill Nero's mama because they did not hit for each other. A lot of mama bitch squabbling going on. Yeah. So, like many children in the past, Nero and Pape's baby died very young, and she got pregnant again really quick, as also you did back then. But one night after Nero came home drunk, they got in an argument, and he kicked her in the stomach and killed that baby. Around this time... You'll have that. You will have that. There were a ton of conspiracies to kill Nero, and he gets super paranoid and has like 40 or so people killed, 19 of whom were senators. He's just murdering everybody. Uh, after So, this- all right, you alluded to this, but like, I, so I'm assuming that what's going on here is you said he slashed taxes, and I was like, oh, he sounds like he hits because nobody wants to pay taxes. But you said people are like, somebody's got to pay for this. But I'm assuming that is what fucked everything up for I him, right? I would say, Like, yeah. he wasn't 
nobody was paying taxes, so nothing. There was nothing no money, was getting done. None, there was no money coming in, right? And everything's falling apart, and he's just fucking whores and killing his mama in like comically elaborate ways, yeah. While the fucking empire's like falling Wiley apart, Coyote Wiley shit. Coyote, he's over yeah. here Wiley Coyoting his mama, yeah. While the empire's falling apart, and everybody else is like, we got to do something about this motherfucker. Yeah, That's, pretty much. Is that what was yeah, happening? There's a lot okay. of insurrections at yeah. this time. Yeah, okay. And he's getting super fucking paranoid. Uh, yeah. and uh, you gotta have taxes, yeah, because you know, like I said, I even put it in my notes. Eventually, everybody realized, like, somebody's got to pay yeah. for this shit. Uh, so on July 19th, 64 AD, there was this big ass fire called the Great Fire, and it lasted for six days, went out, and then lasted another three days. That's and a pretty great fire, it is a great fire, tremendous fire, dude. Did he fiddle during that? So that's what we're about to get to. Okay. First off, just to let you know, how, that's what I heard. Just to let you know how <laughs> big of a fire this was. Yeah, it there's 14 districts in Rome. Uh huh. It completely destroyed 10 of them. That's crazy. Like I knew it was the Great Fire, but like it fucking decimated this goddamn place. So uh, only it, hundreds of people died. That's weird. It, but yeah, only hundreds of people died. Obviously. Thousands were left homeless, and there were riots, and there was a lot of people killed in the aftermath because there was riots and looting and pillages. Uh, and there are some people that say that while the fire was going on, Nero sat in his palace and played his lyre. Played Wonderwall. Yeah, and whether or not, <laughs> yeah, and whether whether or not that's true, by the way, like, what was he supposed to do? Put the fire yeah, out? I mean, I don't know. I get the idea that. While the greatest fire to ever fucking rage in your city is going on, the emperor's in there fucking regaling whores with yeah. Wonderwall. That ain't a good look. There's No, I agree. But there's some people that say that it wasn't that, that he actually went to the town square in the like Shakespearean oh, theater. And played it there. Yeah. Oh, so like even what? worse. <laughs> there's some people that are saying, obviously, this could He's just like be. He's like the band in Titanic. Titanic. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, but here's the deal. It is also posited heavily that Nero started this fire because number one, let the I record show Wiley Coyote doing that. Let the record show he's a huge bag of shit. Yeah. When he was a kid, much like <laughs> he's got needlessly elaborate schemes. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's a pyromaniac. Like he was a pyromaniac when he was yeah. a kid, and yeah. also right after. <laughs> Right after the big fire, he all of a sudden is like, you know what? There's enough space for me to make my golden palace. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, chicken or egg in that situation. Yeah. He had basically, the rumor is, is that he'd been wanting to make this big palace, but there yeah. wasn't enough room. And he was just like, yeah. I know what will fucking fix this. Yeah. I'll start a fire at the bread man's house. Right. So... Uh, everybody was saying it was him and he was just like no nah, it was the Christians yeah. and so yeah. and everybody was just like it was and he yeah. was just like yeah and they were like let's get the lines and so they fed a bunch of Christians to the lions mm -hmm. which by the way I don't know if you know by the way then he then they all start hating him because what did he have to do after all this how's he gonna pay for all this he raised, raised taxes, taxes yeah. raised the fucking taxes so he feeds all the Christians to the lions which we won't get into that uh, my opinions on it but so, in the Bible, like, a lot of these people at this time start talking about how Nero's the Antichrist, and there's a lot of biblical scholars who actually say that Nero is actually mentioned in the Bible as the Antichrist, because, and I fucking wish I'd have written this down, I was going to, but, like, the Mark of the Beast, 666, when you do that shit in, like, Hebrew, like, it spells Nero's name or some shit like that, and, like, there, there was a bunch of this wild shit where they were like, no, 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 the Bible was actually, when the person who wrote the Bible... In, was describing Nero, which to me is just like, there you go, the Bible's full of shit. It was just somebody writing, it was like their inspiration was Nero. But like something about 666 and the way they describe this beast, it's like not just like how we nowadays, people are like, Obama's the Antichrist. It's like, mm -hmm. no, 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 they literally wrote in the Bible that yeah. Nero's the fucking Antichrist. So he raises the taxes, builds his golden fucking palace. Well, after this, uh, he is declared an enemy of the state. You know, and they're like, fuck it. We, we Who declared that? Uh, one of the, the senators. The number one senator? The number one He just senator. walked out in Roman I Square. Declare! I declare that he, the emperor is the enemy of the state, and everybody's like, oh shit, the emperor's yeah. the enemy of the state now. Yeah. So he. Wow, how you could just declare stuff. So he's upset, and he gets fucked up one night, and he's just like, I got to kill myself. 
I, I can't, I can't, be, they're coming to kill me, so I can't be here no more. Um, but he's too much of a chicken shit to like, he can't do it. So he's got like all his slaves with him and they're just like, you want me to kill you, my lord? Oh, they don't talk like that, but they were like, <laughs> he was like do, you, do you, do you want one of us to kill you? And he was like, no, kill your <laughs> same thing about his slaves. It's like, it's like, listen, I'm just going to throw this <laughs> out there. If you don't like it, you throw it right back. It's yeah. fine. I'm only doing this because of how much I love serving you. Yeah. Like, I, I just want to please you. That's all yeah. I'm saying. And it seems like you're sad. So like, I, I'm just going to say like, if you'd like for me to strangle you to <laughs> death, I'll do like it. I'll do it just for you, for just you. for you. I would do it for you. I would else. never, I would never I, ever do that. I just like I'd like to do you a favor. If you don't like it, that's yeah. fine. But I would be honored, yeah. to strangle you to death, sir. Well, hilariously, uh, I think they did pitch that, and he <laughs> and he was like, "No, what I need is for." you to kill yourself <laughs> and that will give That's me the courage me. <laughs> and that will give me the courage <laughs> and they're like yeah, and they're just like Fuck. yeah well they did uh, of course this is how it went yeah yeah uh well th uh th they didn't and he ends up uh fucking uh s uh he ends up stabbing himself or self or poisoning himself fuck i wrote it down twice uh doesn't fucking matter he kills himself and uh his final words were what an artist dies in me. <laughs> what a pretentious queer Piece of shit, man. My like, God. Fucking, yeah. So uh, that is Emperor Nero, the 16-year-old pyromaniac son of a bitch. It's like if fucking Kanye and Wiley Coyote <laughs> were an ancient Roman emperor. <laughs> An ancient Roman teenaged emperor, you'd have Emperor Nero. You sure would. <laughs> and by the way, I would like to say this. Uh, you, I, I didn't find anything on this, but do you remember that story that DJ told us a long time ago about how, like, like, it, like I'm talking about 10 years ago when DJ was just like, buddy, I'll tell you what, I was reading about Nero. Do you know that man? He used to, like, go out in the gladiator days. He used to make his slaves get fucked by giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all I knew about Nero, and I was like, "Why?" And I've been trying to find it, can't find nothing on it. Oh, really? So, no, nothing. What DJ told that, you. So just, find, yeah. yeah. So I think DJ was just like, "I bet you he did yeah, this." Yeah. So yeah, probably. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get uh, out of here. But I, well, I actually, found one more thing here. Oh, you guys that? were wondering if there's Natural fancier child? names for illegitimate, oh, okay. furious offspring. Love child. I hear that. Love one. child. Love yeah, child. Love sounds child. fine. Love child. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Fruit of adultery. I personally feel that like sounds like a soup. I feel like spurious offspring isn't any better than illegitimate I, child or anything. I agree. I think I'd call myself a child, child born, born in the vestry. In the vestry. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that is. Well, there you go. Trey, uh, you know what well, a vestry is. Yeah, I'm sure. Actually, we're not. Uh, we're not quite done. Oh, we know this now. Enjoy this edition of Clearing, Clearing the, the Airs. Airs. Yeah. The Airs. Clearing the Airs. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Royalty and rednecks are alike. They both like cutting and picking fights. Biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong. Sit on down with Corey and Trey and learn some fancy shit. Today we'll laugh a little even when they're wrong. They'll take you to a magical place where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares. They keep it debonair at putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs. Air. Okay. Sorry that you, I couldn't be there for you to do that in my face, that part. <laughs> Was that the I last time we were together on these? Physically, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. I am back on clearing the airs, though. How'd it go last week? It was, I mean, you know, I did it by myself, and uh, yeah. I assume it was good. I Well, I, I know it was. I got a lot of emails about it because I read this uh, lovely, lovely lady. I want to say her name was Catherine. I might be getting it wrong. She wrote a like, 15 paragraph diatribe about how wrong I was about Anastasia. But then she provided, uh -huh. she provided like all the stuff she wishes I would have said. So I read, I read the entire email, which took me like 17 minutes, which I feel uh, was kind of like the perfect addendum to the Anastasia faux pas. So, you know, good clear in the air has got a lot of great, great emails from everybody, which uh, by the way, as you know, you can email us at putting on airs at gmail.com. 
Facebook.com with your thoughts, your concerns, T-shirt ideas, which, God damn it, we got to get on that. We've had so much going on. But, yeah, good clearing there is last week. I missed you, buddy. Yeah, we're just, you know, I'm on, I'm on the road right now doing shows. Go to TreyCrowder.com, by the way, and get some tickets. Come see me. I was traveling, and you were traveling. We were traveling at the same time, and our travel schedules did not match up at all. So we literally couldn't find a time to get this done before the episode had to be put together and posted. So thanks for covering that. And so yeah, on that and on that note, I'm traveling again this <laughs> week. But because of what happened last week, we made it a point to get this done before I left. So we're doing this earlier in the week than we normally do. The point of me saying that is we have not yet had an opportunity to re-listen to this episode. So if there were things you just heard that you feel deserve an apology, sorry, you're not going to get one because we don't even know what we said yet. <laughs> but still. we'll but we'll get a, we'll get over to that next week for sure. We know that it was about car racing and Emperor Nero, but you know, yeah. hell, that could have gone a bunch of ways. That's um, that's damn true. Yeah, I know. I, but yeah, hope y'all like all that car racing talk. I remember t- it's the playground of billionaires' sons and stuff like that, and even NASCAR's gotten rich kitted up in recent years, but. Yeah, I don't remember. A lot of times I listen to these and usually every week I'll hear my old say, I hear past me say something and I'm like, what are you talking oh, about? Oh, dude. Right now? That is so stupid. That, like, like again, I'll, I'll be saying, it's like, I know me now. right now. I know yeah. that that's wrong and dumb. How mm-hmm. did past me not yeah. know that then? You know, it happens every week, but this week I don't have any specifics. So, yeah, yeah, I've only been like truly called out on it on the Anastasia one, but that actually surprises me because again, I re-listen to all these and I'm like, bruh, like I thought I knew that then, or the actual uh, the inverse happens where I learn things that I didn't know that I knew because drunk me knew it, but sober me didn't know it, and I actually teach myself stuff. Like how many times when we were listening to the episode in the hotel did I go, damn, I didn't know that, and it was coming yeah. out of my mouth. Your mouth, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, so like I said, you can email us, the, uh, and we will, we will address all your concerns on the Nero and car racing episode, but I would like to get to uh, some of this week's air mail, if you don't mind, Trey. Yeah, uh, it's for me. Okay, subject, this is from Matthew Tuckner, subject line, Corey fucked up the story about the czar. What's up, heir parents? Love this show. As a West Coast liberal, it's always great to learn about stuff from another perspective. As a history buff, I have had issue with some of Colonel Corey's. <laughs> I have had issue with some of Colonel Corey's lessons, but it's never been. Wait, hold on just a second. I think I read this one last week. I totally did. I apologize. Yeah, okay. Yep, I, yep, right. I did. That's why I had it start. That's my That's bad. Really for you. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was about to say. Oh, this one I wanted. To, I, I was gonna. Uh, I remember I was gonna read this last week, and I was like, "Nope, I gotta wait till Trey is here uh, to read this." Hi, gents. I'm an Aussie writing from beautiful Wellington, New Zealand, and I. Ju- and first off, that's awesome. We're worldwide, mm-hmm. baby. And worldwide. I just and I just have to gush for a second that I watch or listen to Well Read Skews, Bubba Shot, and airs every week. They're available, and I cannot get enough of y'all. We really appreciate that. That's all the shows in the Skew universe, by the way. Um, Now, while there have been a number of things you said on airs that have made me tilt my head like a puppy looking at a possum, nothing, (laughs) nothing has been so egregious to me that I felt compelled to write. However, this week, (laughs) this week, while you were uh, looking through a bunch of photos of Russians, you kept coming back to a photo of two blokes shaking hands in front of one of those uh, fancy Russian churches. Do you remember the picture tray? Uh, I no, I don't remember. Can I share the, my screen? I don't know. I mean, you should be able to. Yeah. Oh, can you see it? Let me see here. No, not right now. So just see you. What about that? Yeah, but it's an infinity window of us. Oh, now it's not. So yeah, you see right. this yeah, picture yeah. right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that one? I don't know how yeah. to make it any bigger, so I'm going to get out of this infinity window. Uh, there we go. Okay, so is that picture right there? Now, you quickly okay. identified Bowie, but kept blanking on the second guy. I was literally yelling at the TV in the vain hope that somehow I could telepathically send the message back in time and space and the penny would drop for you. It's Iggy fucking pop. Oh. At, at one point, hope blossomed as Corey said, hey, wait a minute, that second feller looks a little familiar, but alas, no. Anywho, 
love uh, love you boys, your compatriots immensely. Uh, finally, you'll note my email address also matches my name and fuck dogs. Hells, <laughs> hells. <laughs> you don't hear that not very often. See ya. What. Yeah, see ya. Love ya. Bye. Appreciate that. So that was Iggy Pop there. Um, subject I feel like line. Iggy Pop is a super like distinctive looking guy too. Like I can so easily picture Iggy Pop in my head right now. No well, problem. He wasn't like, dressed exactly like Iggy Pop. He looks like yeah. So it's wild that I had no idea while looking at that picture. But yeah, all right. I agree. It's just because you're used to seeing Iggy Pop either on stage without a shirt on or like in a gutter film by the paparazzi afterwards. And there he just had all his clothes on and a toboggan. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. This is from A. Mitchell, Amanda Mitchell, uh, subject line, Louisiana Rednecks. Hi, Trey and Corey. I thought Professor Cho could maybe talk about uh, how Cajun culture somehow got popular. Rich folks like the Robertsons or Duck Dynasty fame act like they're Cajun rednecks, but they're rich people playing up the redneck part. A lot of Cajun folks put on airs like uh, like they don't just deep fry shit and say, hold my beer. Or maybe you could talk about how rich people and redneck alike pretend to be proud of their ancestry. <laughs> as, a no- <laughs> as a note, Cajuns were looked at as trash for a long time, and until 1980, I think, weren't even recognized as an ethnic group in Louisiana, even though they, and slaves, of course, did everything. I'm really enjoying this uh, like I do King of the Hill. This and that show are hilarious because they're true. Wow, big compliment there. Huge y'all be, compliment. Y- y'all be Highest hitting. Praise. Yeah, y'all be hitting and y'all keep doing it. So there you go, Trey. Uh, subject for uh, you and me. Uh, I could probably look up some you know, Cajun aristocrat people and you could talk about the... Uh, uh, the French and the redneck, the little d- uh, dichotomy there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, I love uh, it. That'd be some good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, well, no, it, sure. I mean, I'll say a brief version of it. They brought up the Robertsons, the Duck Dynasty people. I did a thing with them during COVID, uh, pipe, you know, what came down there and it was a whole like, whatever, uh, you know, it, it, it was fine. They were like perfectly nice and all that stuff. Uh, but they, uh, I just want to say to me, and I could have misread them, but I was with them for like 14 hours mm-hmm. and I felt like they definitely, they're rich, they're loaded. Yeah. But right. There's a type of like loaded redneck that exists, you know, like yeah, what I'm right. saying is like, we've all seen the old pictures of them when they were in college and stuff and they're clean shaven and shit like that. And it's like, they're just faking all of this. They're rich. They grew up privileged and things like that. But like all that, redneck shit that they profess to be into from what i can tell they're pretty fucking genuinely i mean dude the 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 dad or phil was it phil or si was like he was the dad well he was literally terry he was terry bradshaw was his backup quarterback at the university Mm -hmm. of missouri or whatever and he he louisiana i think or louisiana Louisiana, yeah louisiana tech it was was louisiana tech and he like he had a chance to like go pro and shit because he was again Terry Bradshaw, four time Super Bowl champ, was his backup, and he chose to he opted out of football because he would rather duck hunt. So like to me, that's bona fides right there. If you give up like a super hitting career as possibly an NFL player because I don't, I won't have time to duck hunt, I don't really give a fuck how much money you grew up having. That's goddamn red as fuck. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. A uh, couple, couple more here. Uh, oh, son of a bitch! I have lost my spot. Oh, no, we just got one more here. One more here. Um, this is uh, <laughs> subject line. I'm an Englishman who can help you with actual true information. <laughs> um, <laughs> from oh, from Andy Stewart. Uh-oh. Guys, I love your podcast. You really hit for me. Been listening since episode one came out, and you are properly hilarious. That's how you know this is an English guy. Um, Thing is, you guys do need some help on English stuff. I've been around a while, and I'm what you call, uh, I'm what you Dick Van Dyke guys would call cockerney. I'm also in the Cho segment slash demographic of smart, i.e. I know a lot of dumb shit that won't really help me in life, but it'll help you guys out. Right here, I'm offering you guys a full-on English slash UK slash Derbyshire slash Southampton slash Scon ETC reality check on fancy UK shit. I'll do it for free, and I can t- and I can tell you how to really pronounce things. I will say this, though. 
this is going to hit for you, Trey. My cousins are septics, and I have, which is a yank, right? Septic? Septic tank, yank. Oh, I dude, I wasn't following at all. You're you're way better at that yeah, rhyming yeah. thing yeah. than me. Cockney like, rhyming scheme, yeah. Something about it just fucking clicks with you. I yeah, guess, no, because it's no, stupid. I had no idea. Yeah. I I never would have come up with that. But yeah, you're probably right. My cousins are septics and have an English mother, but Trey kicks their asses at an English accent. Please, 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 please don't try and pronounce English stuff without a fact check i implore you love you so much the isotope kid p.s idea for a shirt simply a mod style slash who style target target with a few bullet holes around the center and tray and show hit below oh like the the old who shirts um let me ask you this does does it and for the record thank you for the email does it seem like he's he's saying that it's offensive if we mispronounce english stuff Buddy, I, uh... Because, like, dude, fuck that. Like, like I understand, like, if we were, uh, you know, going out of turn with, like, some Jamaican shit or something like that, but, like, yeah. I don't think it's offensive if we just accidentally uh, mispronounce a silly fucking English word. I could be wrong. No, I don't know. I don't know if it's, like, it's offensive or if it's more like it's just grading it's to offensive his to ears. him yeah right you know what i mean it's like he's not mm-hmm. saying it's like it's offensive in a cancelable way right 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 it's right, just right. like Ugh, oh god Ugh. I can't, yeah, yeah yeah i can't handle this because i understand that i understand that. yeah right okay yeah. well that's all the airmail we have we thank y'all so very much for listening to this week's episode of putting on airs and all the other episodes of putting on airs i know that some people have just started and they're binging remember if you're just listening to it but you'd like to see our fancy set and all that good stuff go to watchpoa.com please subscribe to the putting on airs youtube channel please subscribe to this podcast download it leave us a five-star review if you think we've earned it and also tell your friends we want this to be the number one comedy podcast in the world but there's some big hitters that we're going to have to climb over in order to do that uh-huh. <laughs> but it's possible god but damn we, it so yeah we're yeah we're in it to win it we are all right we are love y'all and we'll talk to you next week askew see you bye